I'm kind of in the middle of having a mild panic attack. Um, there's only a few close people that have ever seen me having one, I guess. Um, so if you're one of those people that are still around, thank you for that. Thanks for not giving up on me. It's hard to concentrate when I'm like this, so I apologize um, for the muddled thoughts and strange behavior, but I kind of have been going back and forth for a while now about filming some of this subject matter because it's extremely personal. Um, it's extremely embarrassing for me. Uh, it's hard to talk about uh, to my closest friends, let alone everybody. I've seen some videos recently on YouTube that have given me hope. So in return, if I can help one person um, that might be struggling out there, then to me, it's worth it. Um, I'm going to try and give you some background. I, uh, I've always had anxiety. Like I would dread getting onto a roller coaster. But once I got on it, I mean, you, you couldn't get me off it again. It was, it was an amazing experience, but I just that initial fear of, of the unknown, I guess. I, but I guess everybody kind of has a little bit of that, but, uh, for me, it's, <clears throat> it's always kind of been more, I have, I had a great home life. My parents are amazing. Um, everyone else in my life was amazing. I had some really close friends that I could rely on at the time. And I was fine. I was good up until it was around 2006 that I was working for a company delivering product in a cube van. Um, one of those vans that has a cab on the front with only two seats in it and like a little sliding hatch door that goes into the back kind of like a like a u-haul truck like a big u-haul um anyway so i was delivering product to this job site where they were building a, a high rise and most of it was already done i was delivering uh hvac supplies so like um, and air conditioning units and stuff. As I pulled into the parking lot, I had to go around this guy grading on a machine. And so I stopped and I, I made eye contact with the, with his guy on the ground. I made eye contact with, I got his attention. And I kind of like said to like motion to the guy, like, Hey man, like, does that guy up on the grader, does he see me? Can I go with, around him? And uh, so he made contact with the guy on the grader and then waved me through. So I drove around the back of this guy on the grader and he backed up into my truck and uh, my blind spot and he drove over completely through the back of the of the truck it was the worst sound i've ever heard in my life just all the metal crunching noises and and it was so loud um so all i could do i didn't even have time to undo my seatbelt and jump out of the truck so all i did was i i turtled myself against the steering wheel um and 
in that moment, I thought I was dead. I thought I was dying. The noise, the, the shaking of the truck with the machine running over it. Um, I thought I was dead. So out of the truck and I immediately, once I realized I was okay, I immediately projectile vomited all over the parking lot. And I mean like projectile, like I've never seen vomit shoot that far. It must've been six feet or something. Um, and I guess it was just my body reacting to what had just happened. And, uh, so my, one of my uh, superiors came and got me and brought me back to the warehouse and, and we sat down and, and they, uh, they took a report of what happened. Yeah. And I found out later on that when they looked into this guy driving the loader, that this was his third time destroying property on the job because he was drunk and, uh, they sent me home. And I think I was off for, I don't know, a few days. But I was, I was fine. I wasn't hurt at all. Wasn't injured in the slightest. So I uh, took a few days off. And then I came back to work. And everything was normal for another couple of weeks. And then I was in a, a, another truck delivering supplies. And I was driving out in the country somewhere. And all of a sudden, this overwhelming sense of dread came over me. Like, exactly what I felt in that moment when I thought I was dying and going to be crushed under that machine. That's what came over me on this day a few weeks later. And I, I had to pull over and, and just sit in my truck for like, 20 minutes just like crying just bawling breaking down like a like a like a freaking baby something I didn't I never did and uh you know I, I never considered myself a freaking tough guy or nothing but I didn't cry like I, I I didn't ever break down like that so the fact that that happened scared the crap out of me. I'm just thinking, what the heck is wrong? Like, why, why am I doing this? Why am I going through this? Why am I experiencing this? So after, um, after a little bit of time passing, say a few months, um, I just felt like I was losing my mind and I, 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 uh, I ended up losing that job. They let me go cause I became, they couldn't depend on me anymore to be there and get the work done. So, um, anyway, um, so I ended up on unemployment for a little bit. And I signed up for counseling because I, I, I was just in such a dark, weird place. So I ended up getting a, uh, a psychiatrist for, I don't know, six months or so. And he diagnosed me with something called panic disorder. And I had never heard of this before in my life. And, and uh, I hate, I don't like using the term PTSD because I feel that that should be reserved for people who have actually been through some stuff like uh, veterans, first responders, paramedics, things like that, where they've seen some horrific stuff that people should never have to see and, and they have to deal with that. It affects, I, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy because it definitely I'm I'm struggling with it and I am suffering it affects all of my relationships friends family girlfriends um,
What's it like to have a panic attack? Well, it makes no sense. There's no rhyme or reason to when it happens. There's no, I don't have, say, a trigger as in like, you know, I, I see a grater <laughs> and I lose my shit. That's, that's not, that's not how my thing works. Um, like I'm sure there's things like veterans or cops that hear, you know, loud pops or a backfire of a car and it triggers something in them fight or flight because of, the, you know, gunshots or something. I can see that making sense. But with me, I don't have a trigger like that. I just am going about my business on a regular basis. And all of a sudden it is completely all encompassing, overwhelmingly, uh, just takes over and I can't just shake it off or walk it off. Believe me, I've tried this. This all started for me in 2006 and it's 2021 now. So, um, Believe me, it's been a long time I've been dealing with this and some people know about it and some people don't. Um, I've gotten good at hiding it. What's it like to have one? Okay, so overwhelming sense of dread, fear of death. Um, your mind goes foggy, like it's hard to concentrate or put together a sentence um uh your my my throat at the top of my chest gets extremely tight as if someone's choking me and my hands and feet uh go numb and like you get the tingles now a doctor once explained to me that the reason that that happens is because your heart rate increases and your breathing is shallow but quick. So your body is in fight, fight or flight mode and what it does to protect your vital organs is it'll pull all of your, your blood from your extremities. Just like say if you were stuck in the ocean and you were becoming hypothermic your body would do the same thing. It would pull all the blood to your, to your core to try and uh, keep you alive. So that's why your hands and feet uh, get the tangles and they go numb. Sometimes they even change color if it's a bad one because the blood leaves. Um, I don't know what else to talk about really, just that this, uh, I know that COVID-19 and the pandemic and the lockdowns and the isolation and all that, it's had an effect on a lot of people. It's made my symptoms worse. Um, And I I guess I just want my friends and family to know that sometimes the decisions that I make aren't ones that I, I want to make, but I have to make at that moment for my own sanity. And so I'm not, I'm not neglecting anyone on purpose. I'm not ignoring anyone. I'm just, I'm just trying to take care of me. Um, and you know, the, the, uh, again, the embarrassing aspect of it, it just makes me want to shelter in place even more. Um, but anyway, um, this is kind of, uh, I was thinking, uh, I was pondering making this kind of a series where I can talk about uh, mental health for people and 
try and help out a bit. I mean, I, I don't know what I can do, but I can talk about it and my experience. And like I said, if that helps anyone, um, I can talk about what's helped me over the years, try and deal with it and um, what hasn't worked. And uh, I wish it didn't rule my life as much as it does, but it's kind of a, something I've been dealing with for a long time. It's a, it's uh, made me back out of plans at the last minute quite often. It's made me change decisions about what I'm doing with my life as far as jobs are concerned or, you know, living arrangements. Um, just things that I want to do that all of a sudden I'm just too afraid to do. Hopefully you don't experience what I experience, but if you do, just know that there's other people out there that have it too, and it sucks, but we struggle through it. Anyway, thanks for listening. Cheers.